In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We give a shout to Jesus as we take our seats. Adonai, manifest yourself. Jaira, Rafa, Elohim, Shada. Adonai. Hallelujah. Amen. Greetings once more in the name of Jesus. Welcome to church. There is a revelation that Jacob had. Jacob said, I did not know. This is the gate of heaven. We are going to share the scriptures and the word of God together. I want to welcome all those on radio. You are in the right station. By the way, we got an offer to broadcast in the, north, the whole of Northwest. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we'll be taking the offer Amen. to broadcast. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are grateful to God Amen. that there are people who hear the word. And they say, we like it for our people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not for commerce. It's for, for Kwebo. Yes, there are people who want you to broadcast for commerce. But Jesus said, freely you have received. Freely give. But we always say, the gospel cost is not free. So welcome to Emmanuel Christian Church Arcadia. Oh. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, welcome. And those online, the church of the future. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, we'll soon have our, you know, they say, uh, like father, like son. Amen. So we'll soon have our flow church as well. Hey, there's no amen. amen. Your unbeliever don't like. Hey. Or Lebo Thomas. Look, look at your neighbor and say, you look like Thomas. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, last week, we we're teaching on personal relationship with God. Men after God's own heart. Uh, cherish the place you have with God. The relationship you have with God. The relationship you have with your shepherd. David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I attended a small meeting, a close meeting yesterday. And the person invited a handful of people. And the average relationship was more than 20 years. Some people can't have a relationship from morning to the evening. You have, you have a shepherd. You don't care about anything. You look at your neighbor and say, I have a shepherd. Yeah, cherish. Cherish the relationship. Cherish the relationship. Psalm 89 verse 20 says, I have found my seven David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. God has found you. And with his holy oil, he has anointed you. I have noticed that it is the anointing that distinguishes and makes us separate. Whenever you have to work all your life, but when you have to, for things that are free, yes, your relationship with God, 
Botsalana jwa gagwe le modimo. Your relationship with other humans. Botsalana jwa gagwe batho ba bangwe. That's what makes life to be. Ke so se se dirang gore botshelo e ne botshelo. Okay, let's go to the example the God spoke to to Samuel. Modimo bo letse le Samuel. That I want to anoint somebody. Gore ke batla go ke batla go tlotsa mongwe. Tell you neighbor God wants to anoint somebody today. I wonder who is it. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I think it's me. <laughs> I'm the anointed of the Lord. Lord. Yeah, we read a story last week. And the story was about the sons of Jesse. An invitation was given. Samuel said, I'm coming. He's a prophet. He says, I'm coming to your house. You know, so they prepared luxurious meals and everything. So it was not an impromptu, impromptu visit. He, he prepared. He told them, I'm coming. And they prepared everything. And he told this son, please wash. Please be clean. Please dress very well. Tell you if you watch this morning. Hey boys, have you watched this morning? Hey our brothers, you just put on Vaseline to say I'm fine. Yeah, that's why it's very nice to be a boy. You know, it's not complicated. Hallelujah. And so Samuel arrived. Me Samuel Afita. And called the, the 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 house of Jesse and called the sons. Can I ask seven men to come? Abita ba lapala ga Jesse le ba roba gagwe. Yeah, don't wait until you we tell you that you are a man. How many? 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. Ah, will is do jil. 1 2 3 4 5 6 Seven. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says when Samuel arrived, Maybe we'll hear Samuel I after just after. want to remind you because my message today starts from here. And the Bible tells us about the appearance of the sons. Maybe we'll but the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look. The first, the firstborn son of David, what is his name? El- Eliab. Eliab. Uh huh. So it was when they came, he looked at Eliab. And he said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. What do you think? Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. Lord, should I prophesy? And the Lord says, The guy looked at some, but it's not him. Then the second one, what was the name of the second son? Abinadab. Abinadab. You can see Abinadab with his head in church. Hey. He's a man of styles. Is there a sister in the church? Is impressing. Hey, Abinadab. And hey, what is it? Can I prophesy, Lord? The Lord said, Can I put oil on him? The Lord said, No, no, no. Move. Then he came to the third son. What was the name of the third son? Shama. Hey, they say Shama. Others, this was they say Shama. So brother Shama was sure today is my day. And the prophet, when he wanted to pour oil, the Holy Spirit said, "No." And it, he came and passed until everybody, and there was no one. And then he asked the question. Is there no? Is this all your sons? Can you imagine? Can your father forget when the prophet is invited? Yes, slaughter. They have animals that when prophet arrive, we are slaughtering for everybody. Hey, may your father never forget you. Amen. May you never be excluded from great and powerful things. Amen. I don't see my come. You will be my David today. Hallelujah. Hey, and you can see how young he is. So he said, he said, there is a small one. He's with sheep. 
Me ba khona lo mongwe le go rudisa dinku kwa ntse. So you can imagine says says somebody quickly let him go and fetch him. Me ba mmolela gore ba mmite e mora o a se. No, he was a boy. Ini se se ntse le mosimanyana. He didn't wash that day. Una sa tlhapa. Oh, you have never been to the village. In the village we don't have running water. Oh, you are watching every day. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, doctor. <laughs> In the village, we have to fetch the water. <laughs> so the luxury that you'll watch day and night is the thing we don't know. Oh, I see you come from a township. So can you imagine how David smelled? They said, quick, quick, the prophet is there. You know, we went for a camp with some young boys. There was a pool, there was a pool in front of, of our dorms where we were sleeping. Every morning they wake up with their jockeys and they dive in the water. No soap, nothing. Then they, they dried themselves and say, we washed. So it was David. So he washed. The prophet looked at him. He didn't look like the part. And I want to talk to you today about it. What distinguished David from all his seven brothers? What will distinguish you from all other people? Many people come to church. But they don't know God. We have one gentleman who did great exploits. He has churches everywhere. If I mention his name, you will know him. But he doesn't know God. He's not born again. My friend said he's making exploits for a God he doesn't know. You're talking about who, who attended prayer in the morning. You should read the whole book of John. You realize that Philip was... Uh, Thomas was not born again. Philip was not born again. They were with Jesus, but they did not know Jesus. There are many here, you might be accompanying us because we are a good company, but you are, the reality of it is that you do not know God. And these brothers, God visited their homes, but they didn't know God in the detail that David knew God. The impact that David had or the impact that the Holy Spirit had in the life of David was supernatural. The brothers were all good. They served in the government. They had premier positions. But today I want you to have a very good memory. What distinguished David from all his brothers. Let's give a powerful clap of as they take their seats. Was David too special for God to choose him? No, David chose himself for God. Uh, the honorable doctor, can we move my table here, please? Hallelujah. Amen. What makes David different? Today, the subject today is devotion. Relationship with God. Most women will understand the word devotion. We have come to learn that girls love boys more than boys love girls. It's true. You might not like it. We are told that girls love boys more than boys love girls. What is the devotion? It's to relate in this regard. We are talking about within our context. I'll try and explain. It is to relate to God through his true prayer and the word. The book of Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 6 verse 4. It says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. 
We must set aside a specific time to worship God. Now, I know you don't want to believe. You don't want to believe. I can see all the women they say I'm biased. I'm not biased. Your heart is designed. If we go to Genesis, it's part of the case. Genesis chapter 3. When, when we fell, what did the Bible say about the woman? Huh? Huh? No, no, that, not that one. The, when God was speaking to, to, to Eve, the case. One, you'll have birth with struggle. So that curse, you must break it now. Before you get married, Father, I pray that this curse is reversed because I'm in Christ. He carried my curse. He says to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows and your conception. Hey! Suffering. You submit yourself and no conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. There is a desire. You see, it says your desire. Do you see it? Your desire. Let's read it. Let's let the woman read with me. Your desire. Your desire. What is the story of a girl? Sister, it's the scripture. I didn't write it. My beloved sister, I didn't write. Doctor, did I write this book? I have my books I wrote. I can give to you. We can argue that my... But all of us know that the desire that is hidden in our hearts, our security, even though you are educated, one woman... This one she wrote. She's, a, she's overseeing a, a number of companies. Extremely successful. She said all her friends are career women. But along the way, they had to get married and have babies. But she was being invited worldwide. So she was teaching about femininity, assertiveness, powerful woman. And she said now she's 50 something. And she's realizing that all she pursued was nonsense. You know, she's got all the money. Life, life can be hard. I say, I think about my friends every night. They have, they have their husband and their children. They didn't achieve as much, but they have more than what I have. It's a devotion, the relationship that you have with somebody else. Imagine somebody. Amen. I have a lot to cover. So, first service, somebody told me, yeah, This one, I like it. It comes out. <laughs> so, I must make sure I work within time. What is to devote? It's reverencing God. You see, when, when you love somebody, I've seen two people who love each other. They are devoted to each other. We are told of beds that meet for life. Jekylls as well meet for life. Eagles meet for life. No promiscuity. They don't, they, don't, they don't sleep with other birds. Hey. To be devoted. It gives us just careful to the realization of the presence and the claim of God. When you are devoted in the midst of the person or in the absence of the person, your devotion remains fully given. The Bible tells us about a woman called Anna. Anna, the husband died when they were married for seven years. And from that day, the Bible says she was devoted. She gave herself fully. 
Luke chapter 2 verse 25. It says behold there was behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and this man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And when, when you are devoted, there is that sacredness about the devotion you have. Uh, I have a friend. We got married at the same time. I think we married just before I got married. He's a pastor, I'm a pastor now. And he said to me, we're very close. Me, really close. My, my friend, we are both married now. There is the door to enter. We have entered. But there's no exit. We must make it work. From that day to today, there is no door out. There is no exit in my relationship with my wife. Unless she has an exit in her head, I'll make it difficult for her to exit. I'll make sure I delete every exit that she can try to use. I'm going to tell somebody. It's the level of devotion that you give that you will overlook the many things the imperfections the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins but the day your love is no longer you start to see mistake my husband is like this my wife is like this so it's is like this my wife can't cook oh, all along she couldn't cook where will she cook? Today, girls don't know how to cook. It's true. We used to have, when we were growing up, in the church, and we don't have it in our church, in the church, many years ago, when they realized girls can cook, once a month or so, the girls will cook one vegetable, one meat, whatever. And then they will put pumpkin cooked by Sister J. Stew, stew cooked by Sister B. Cabbage cooked by. We, we used to donate five, 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 five rand. Oh, was it five, five cents. I think we were donating five cents. Then we scoop to taste how did the sister fare. <laughs> Baby, we need to do it again. You get it? Because some people can cook. Mercy. Acts chapter 10 verse 2. chapter 10 verse 2. The Bible talks about Cornelius. It says a devout man. One who feared God with all his household. This man was powerful. I was saying early in the morning. If you are going to be having control over your children. As a, as a parent when they are teenagers control them now when they can be controlled Between age of birth to seven if you miss the control there you will never get it again if you don't inculcate prayer reading of the word devotion they don't see your life you can stay home on Sunday in your pajamas and linger around and don't you are, you are teaching your, you are devoting them to the things that you like and so when they grow up 
they'll just multiply a little bit more. They'll be more vicious than you. They'll tell you, I don't want to go to church. The Bible says, he feared God with all his household. Who gave arms generously to the people and prayed to God always. Hallelujah. Amen. He prayed to God always. To devote is to have a duty of respect. Now, I want to take you to Psalm 23. We're talking about David. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. See, he was writing his own experiences. He was a, a, a shepherd. He leads me beside the still waters. For his name's sake. He makes, he restores my soul. Hey, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your, your prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Hey. What is that song? Yeah. It's not everybody who has it. We can sing the song, but your head is dry. It's just Vaseline. You know Vaseline? You can shine as much. My cup runs over. So David was devoted to God. To be devoted to God, what distinguished David from his brothers was his love for God. We read, the Bible says in Psalm 89, I found my, day, my I find my servant David. He says, I found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. Have you seen anointed people? You can find them. They will, they will come out. You can, you can dirty their name, blaspheme, say whatever. Coming out, they are coming. Come to somebody. Few points, then uh, uh, we, we will close. Number one, David loved God's house. <clears throat> Psalm 27, verse 4. These are Psalms of David. It says, One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek. That, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Matthew 6 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where I come from, I've seen girl come out of the window. I've seen girl coming early, like 4 a.m., trying to sneak back into the house. That's why I say people, because we no longer stay. At home, we used to sweep the the grounds and in the morning. Hey. They'll be telling us. They'll tell us that she slept somewhere else. Hey. 
Mercy. Mm. Yeah, pursuing what cannot be caught. Where is your treasure? Ask your neighbor, where is your treasure? Uh, we have a, a, a tribal rivalry. We are Tuanas. We have tribal rivalry. And there's like, we, we have tribes. Okay, let me try and help you. I'll say it in English. I'll try to explain it in English. When we were at school, we had Tuana writers writing books for our education. So the person who wrote the book was a cutter. The uh, totem is a monkey. The symbol of the tribe is the monkey. When they meet, they say, Hi, monkey. And the other one is crocodile. When we meet, we say, Hi, crocodile. We do it even now, today. We say, Kabo. You get it? So this guy wrote, wrote a book from great one. And he said, there was a, uh, the monkey was crossing the river. And the monkey can't swim. And crocodile says it's my turn. So monkey said to crocodile, let me, can you help me to cross over the other side? So crocodile said, good shot. Get on my hop on my bag. So crocodile had a like crocodile had like crocodile had like today is the day. So midway. In the depth of the of the river. He said to the monkey, I want your liver now. So the monkey realized I'm in trouble. And he looked, he saw a weaving bed. You know the weaving bed? He saw the nest of a weaving bed. Hanging on the willow tree. And the monkey thought quickly and said, Ah, you see that? That nest, that's where my liver is kept. Because it's so precious, I can't go around with it. I have to put it somewhere. That's where the tribal rival is that. In other words, the, the crocodile is a fool, you see. So the crocodile crossed over. Because the monkey said, when I get on the tree, I will give you my liver. Yeah. Are you getting it? Yeah. So the monkey came out. And the monkey laughed. He said, You fool crocodile. My liver is in me. You will not get my liver to So, some of us, we are in that state where your treasure is. When you love God, you will devote. Number two, he prayed early in the morning. Jesus prayed early in the morning. Mark 1 35 says, Now in the morning, having risen long time before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And he prayed. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 5. It says, the subheading says, Joy in fellowship of God. A psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. I left that part so that you know that he was in the wilderness. There was no uh, McDonald's, there was no KFC, there was no movies. What do you call them? Uh, there was no Netflix. Hey. Oh God, that's David. He says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. You are saying to God, You are my water. I know this is a verse you write to your boyfriend. Or boys to the Lord, the girl, and say, Early 
In the morning I thought of you. Khotsa ke ke vesele gore ba simane ba rata go ikwala ba tsetsane. In the morning. Are mo misong. I was looking for you. Ke ne ke go batla. I thirst to see you. Ke 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 batla go bona. Oh my flesh longs for you. Nana yane e batla go e batla go. Where I am. Mo ke leng mo teng. It's dry and thirsty you are my water. Ke le ke ke le ke le fatseleng gore ga go nna metse. Go nna le komelelo. David didn't have time for those things. David don't have time for those things. He knew. Unait. Where his secret was. Mo 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 spinning sa kahit sino. Best two place. Let's move. Because best two. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. Kaya kaya kubatli le mo hotle. Mo kereke. Mo kereke. Yeah. To see your power and your glory. Well, now you are not looking for power and glory. Fella, you are not looking for when I have that. Because of your loving kindness, it is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Now I want you to see here that David Best for God. But he says, "I've come to see your glory and your power." Because of your loving kindness. It's better than life itself. My lips shall praise you. People don't look for fellowship. They choose to be by themselves. Amazing. Number three, David, David was distinct. God loved David because David chose God. I don't know if you've been there. I've been there more than once. Where you have the craving for your secret place. Just to go and pray and be. I was saying to somebody, there is a place that after you have prayed, this like you have eaten either honey or sugar or whatever. But you can feel the sweetness of your prayers. That really, I've entered another dimension through my prayers. Amen. And so you look forward every time to that place where you have connection with God. David, he waited on God through the night. And we see the same in Jesus. He waited. In the night. The book of Luke 6:12 says, "Now it came to pass in those days that he went out, that is Jesus, to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God." Secrets. Most Secret come through intimacy. You said in the, I, 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 I was reading espionage. You know how nations law and get information from other nations. And so they will have agents. And they will have agents. Like in the church here, we can have agents who are sitting here. 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 We can have agents who The girl is a spy. She will collect all the information she can get. Bishop one day told us. Anyway, this was in the public. He was preaching like I'm preaching. Bishop, when you're not bishop, you're not a rera. He told us that there was a a church, a pastor who was very powerful. He was preaching so well. 
there was a woman who came to church just for him. So the woman stayed in church for five years. Doing everything to get the attention and to get the pastor. And one day she succeeded. So they said while the woman was pulling the painting up. He said, I've been waiting for this moment far too long. You are finished today. You are in my hand from this day. Imagine somebody. Somebody waiting. Devoting. Their time. Just to catch you. Because if you are in the spirit, you will know. It might to get somebody. What number are we? Number four. David was a worshiper. He waited on God throughout the night. Psalm 63. Let's go back there. Psalm 63 verse 6 says, When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Mercy. Jesus stayed throughout the night devoting to come and know God. Number four, you must be a worshiper. Psalm 50 verse 23. Whosoever offers praise, glorify me. And to, to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. He who orders his conduct aright. Psalm 100 verse 1 and 2. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. So when you come before the Lord. The greatest worship is not the singing they sing. It's to live a holy life. To live what? A holy life. Jesus died without getting married. So, you even if you don't get married, the Lord. You see, can you imagine a woman comes to church just looking to get married? I had a girl who said there are no men in the church. Her devotion was a wrong devotion. Possibly when the last brother was announced she's getting married, she decided I'm leaving. And then after four or five years, she came back to church. Her devotion was misplaced. And I asked her the first day I saw her, I said, Are you married now? You are looking at the wrong side. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. God knows your need. When God was looking for you, he said to Adam, Adam, where are you? Not that he didn't know where Adam was. But he was bringing Adam to his consciousness that he has left the place of meeting with his devotion with God has been broken. You must be a worshiper of God. Even though he slay me, yet once again I will stand my ground. David acknowledged his sin. The difference between David and his brothers, David had a sensitive and a tender heart. 
sensitive. Somebody at Aga Jamnat, Kim Torel, Aga Jamnat, Kimare Sori. I didn't, I didn't have a nice time making Musahori. We must acknowledge our sin. Psalm 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you. And my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Psalm 51, verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Many of us, our sin is always before us. But we are ashamed, so we will not confess. David sought the presence of God. Psalm 145 verse 18 says the Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth. You must seek the presence of the Lord early in your life. Most people don't do it. And therefore never have a relationship with God. So I put this table here today. I want to challenge you. Uh, how David distinguished himself. He made a decision. Early in the morning. I will seek the face of God. To find God. If, if God is going to use you. This is my belief that I'm a pastor, not because I, I, I've gone to Bible school, but not because of Bible school. I was a pastor before I went to Bible seminary. So I used to devote, I was taught to do devotion. And today I want to teach you how to do devotion. So that your life will change. People think we have special powers. But it is the relationship that we have with God that makes a difference. To have an effective devotion, number one is important. To make a suitable time for your devotion. And to decide how long am I going to devote. Make time to make an appointment with God. It's the frequency, not the length. People say, oh, I prayed for 12 hours. It's a good thing you prayed for 12 hours. But it's not in the prayer of 12 hours once a year that will move God to you. It's not the, the 21 days of prayer and fasting. My relationship with my wife is consistent. It's daily. Do you understand? So you make up your mind. I'll wake up in the morning between 4 and 5. Or between five and six. Depending on what time you go to work, what is the best time? Number two, you look for a quiet place. Or a place that will have less distractions. Because I agree in the family where almost every space in the house was taken. Every room you had two, three, four people who were 13 people in a two bedroom house. So you can imagine the lounge we sleep in, the parents have their own bedroom, the other bedroom people sleep in. Some of us who were boys who were sleeping in the kitchen, you know, under the table, the leg of the table. We just clean, sweep the floor, put the 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 the, 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 the mats. Then put our blankets and we stay there. We are the first people by four when the parents wake up. The first people who get kicked is us. The last people to sleep is us. So you have to find a way to devote. So when everything, when everything goes quiet in the house, you know, four o'clock, the parents will wake up. 
It's your time. When they wake up, it will take another two hours, six o'clock before others wake up. So it's a good time to have time to pray to seek the face of God. So you look for a quiet time, a quiet place, you do so. So you do it, my advice is that do it in the morning. We pay ourselves better when we make ourselves first with the Lord. Be honest and true with God. David says, I will confess my sins to the Lord. So he becomes true, naked. Always have a Bible. If we had the time, they are showing me time. If you had the time, I will read. So you take your Bible Then you read It's not to try and read the whole Bible Somebody will say I'm reading the Bible I'm starting from Genesis I can tell you you are not going to be a very good Christian If you start from Genesis There are so many stories that don't make sense You need to, to grow some muscle so you go to Epistle of John. Chapter 1. Chapter Can you go to John, 1 John chapter 1? Put it on the screen, please. I'll show you. It's about 10 verses. It says, that which was from the beginning. Which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon our hands have handled concerning the word of God so John was saying to us what I'm teaching you is what I've experienced my prayer is that you should experience God for yourself people don't know that God hears prayer God will meet all your needs. And if you go beyond your needs, God will do miraculous things for you. Imagine somebody. So you look for a good Bible. My advice, personal advice. Don't buy a Bible like this. this is not, it's, a, it's a Bible, but it's not a good Bible for a new believer. I'll say to you, go and buy yourself a study Bible. You see, a study Bible, it says, John 3, 16, you say, for God so loved the world. Or this verse we have read, if you were to look at it and you go and check, it will have so many to explain. So you become a better person every day you read. It's about, uh, how many verses? 10, 11 verses. 10 verses. So, you read, you want to understand. Then you must have a notebook. If you check, I've got an iPad, but I prefer to write. I have my book every time with me. Even when I am in church, I write, please. God speaks. So have a, have a notepad. It's more like your private talks with God. Personally, I like the ledger. You know, the big book, the black big book. That one is for my devotion. Then the small one is for my communication during the day with God. My prayers, I used to write my prayers. If I give you some of my books, you will enjoy. I will write five, six. When things come to pass, I, I can come back and say, Hey! This has come to pass. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. So my challenge to you, always have a Bible, have a journal or a notebook, write down your revelation, your thoughts, the rebukes, maybe what Joel went, and when you read the scripture says, do not be equally yoked. Maybe you are a thief. The Bible says there is a curse for the thief. Maybe you like lying to color, to make your word colorful, your life perpetually. Then you realize the scripture is correcting me. Then you arrive from today, no more lying. And Satan will give you the opportunity. Immediately you say, Amen. 
At work, you you will find yourself in that situation where you have to lie. Mildred. And then you remember the Holy Spirit says, "Now is your turn to grow. Tell the truth." You write and make your request. Now you are writing what you expect God to do for you. Your petitions, your intercessions, your prayers, and then lastly, you note. No note, as in paying attention to. The answered prayers. When I was at school at the university, I had a small book. I still, I still have it. I wrote all the things I wanted. I said, if I finish my basic degree, I'm going to do an honors. When I finish the honors, I'm going to do a master's. I will have been 25 if I finish master's. Then I said, when I'm 26, I'll get married. But that could not be. But I had plan B. So I struggled at the university. No, no funding. I had to go and look for a job. I thought I'll go back and, and continue. But my work made me to work till 8, 9 in so I say I'm changing plan A to plan B. I'm going to get married. So I get married. I got married early. This is my 35th year. Am I right? I got married very early. So I got married. And I work all the other things in reverse. Then my education changed. I started not to go to university but do specialized courses. And I distinguished myself among many. But the greatest thing that distinguished me was my devotion. I could hear what the Spirit is saying to me and respond to what the Spirit is saying. This David, this David, he had God. So when his friends and everybody else, they were loving soccer. European, useless European soccer in that. Did you know that it's proven during the Africa Cup of Nations, mm. we, we exceeded the, the Arabian, what was it? The World Cup. We were over 2.2 billion people who were watching TV every day. Me, who who Afcon, but while the band 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 TV, in the band 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 billion nearly two. Who 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 fed more? More than the World Cup. Who fed the World Cup? And then the discovery was found that if there is anyone who's funding European soccer, is us because we buy their T-shirts and whatever. So we are fully colonized. So your devotion is in the wrong place. David's devotion was not soccer, it was God. David's devotion was not cars and wheels, it was God. David's devotion was not girls or boys, it was God. And so much of his success is because he was led by the Spirit. So David could read and be in the presence. If you read Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me to lie down. In other words, David's comfort was in the Lord. If I had time, I'll tell you all the things. You can ask me anything I have physically. I'll tell you how I got it. I've, I've never bought a car with the full price. I've never. It has never happened. Every time I go and look for a car, I pray. Lord, Lord, I need a car. Like this year, the Lord told me, I need a car. 
You get it? So I pray. It took me to buy the car I'm driving. It took us how, how long? 16, 18 months. Yes, I was waiting. I was praying. And I was sure that this car, I got it at half the price of the original price from the shop. Because I waited and when I was supposed to sign the contract for 900,000, the Holy Spirit said, check again. And when I check again, 50% was removed. I paid 450. Me 50 percent I can talk about this building. I mean, I can tell you many things. I, I don't know if you understand. The houses I, I have bought. The Holy Spirit says, no. Go. He says, phone 8 o'clock, phone the head of housing. 8 o'clock. Phone the head of housing in the bank. And when I phone the head of housing, he says, I will discount you. I will cut the price. And he cut the price by, by two thirds. <laughs> he removed a million for my property. He says, one million will be taken. Literally, it's for free. You can, you, please. I'm saying to you, David was led by the Spirit. Think about when he killed Goliath. Was it a coincidence that he was there? So what I'm saying is that your devotion to God will distinguish you between yourself and your friend. But since you don't devote, since you don't make time for God, God will not make time for you. If you were to make your devotion daily, seriously, your life will change. People will see the difference. Do you understand? People will see the difference. People will look at you and say, this can be. The love that God has for those who love him. He said, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him. God takes delight in your fellowship with him. But your things are not working because you think every time we come and pray for you, your success is there. And some of us are succeeding because we are in the good company. You remember last week I told you uh, the Lord, the, the cousin to Abraham. Lord succeeded because he was in a good company. Not that he was devoted to God. Lord was not born again. In the morning, in the morning we read the book of John 14. We realized Thomas, can you take us there? Thomas asked a question to show that he has no understanding. I think it's verse, 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 four, verse five. Verse five. And Thomas, uh, Thomas said to him, Thomas, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we get, how can we know the way? Jesus, Jesus said to you, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Next verse, please. It's a killer. What does it say? Can we read it together? If you have known me. Yes. So we are in church, but we don't know who I worship. If you have known me, you wouldn't ask the question you are asking. If you go down, you'll find the question of Philip. Philip asked a question. Philip said to the Lord, Show us the Father. It is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long? And yet you have no you have not known me. Philip. Philip. I'm sure not the Nehila I'm pretty sure he was irritated. Very irritated. He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say? Show us the Father. Listen, your challenge is that you don't know God because you don't make time to know Him. For me, for me to know my wife, I have to spend time with her. And even now, when I think I know her, I get surprised. 
le khona jone le fakere ke a moitsi go khona le go tse ding le nna ke a makala oh you don't know mystery revelation every day there is a revelation you start to realize oh marana just there's no a day that is the same you know every day has its own revelations ha hona tse le le tshwanang tse le ngwe le lengwe le na le tshenolo ya yona ema se somebody so my push is be a person who desires God. And the only way you will know God, God is in his word, is by his word and through his spirit. You sit, you read. You listen. There is a lot you could do. My time is up. Wow, I'm long gone. Every head bowed, every eye closed. <laughs> Father have mercy on us. Father in the name of Jesus we thank you we give you praise. Here we are once more in your presence. We desire to know you. David says only will I seek you. Father even today we want to know you. You said come to me all you who are heavy laden. You said my my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father may you lift up our burden in the name of Jesus. While all eyes are closed and heads are about. Maybe you are here. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? If you are here, you say, I want to receive Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be intimate. I want to be devoted to God. The Bible says, I accept a man be born again. You will not be, you will not be, you will not not see the kingdom of God. I want to pray with you if you are here. Say, I want to receive Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Lift up your right hand, lift it high so I can see it. I'll pray with you. Is there somebody this morning? I want to receive Jesus. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. Is there somebody else? The Holy Spirit is talking to you. Do not deny him. Can the church pray with me? Can you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive you this morning as my Lord and Savior. I want to devote my life to you in Jesus' name. I recognize I am a sinner. I need a Savior. Lord, forgive me all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Make me your child in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give a powerful clap offering?